Well, in terms of um, knives being sharp, we really have uh, perceivable sharpness and actual sharpness. So uh, let me let me explain this. So. Um, for instance, this here, all right? Now, this is a case jumbo stockman, all right? Um, and as you can see, this is a full height grind. And it's a full height hollow grind. Um, you know, uh, we're talking like a straight razor, okay? So, <clears throat> um, this knife edge, the actual cutting edge of this of this knife right here, okay, this can go dull actually, okay, we're saying not even shaving hair or cutting paper that well, but it will still slice quite easily. All right, now we take this knife right next to it, okay, here's another pocket knife, a little bit more <laughs> modern rendition. All right, and, and forgive some of the dirt and grime on these. They're uh, they're they're users. Uh, now look at this thickness here. This is another full height grind, but this is a full height flat grind. All right. So now with this knife here, this knife, this cutting edge here, the very cutting edge can go dull, and this is going to have a harder time slicing or cutting anything over the thinner edge knife. Now this is actually quite obvious, okay? And in in you know, it, this is physics. So the thing the thing about it is if I wanted to cut into my finger, and both knives cutting edges are the same dullness or the same sharpness if you will. And I want to cut into my finger and I just want to push cut. And we'll say I'm going to exert a force of 5 pounds, we'll say. Well, the thinner edge will put more pressure on whatever I'm cutting than the thicker edge. For obvious reasons, the thinner edge being thinner can pinpoint its force more, if you will, where the wider edge uh, displays that, that, that force over a you know, larger distance. So in under five pounds of pressure, we'll just say this cuts, but under five pounds of pressure, this does not cut. So that is perceivable sharpness. All right, perceivable sharpness. Actual sharpness is they are the same, right? The, the cutting edge is the exact same. Both uh, will not shave hair. Both will not cut paper, okay? But one of them, because of geometry, will uh, still perform. And that is what you have in, in a, in a uh, you know, old slip joint folder like this. And it's, it's very indicative of these, you know, American-made folders. Uh, and why they're so popular is it doesn't require... Uh, as much attention to a razor sharp edge, and that's advantageous in the field uh, because even a dulled knife, uh, maybe you've dulled it on, um, you know, doing out game, whatever it might be, but the dull knife will still perform. Okay, so here's here's a here's a case in point. I gave this knife one time to someone who. Uh, who, who had never used a knife like this here, this Mora 511, and uh, it was wicked sharp, and I gave it to them, and I said, here, you know, use, use this here. We were at camp, you know, to cut up some things. Now, this person doesn't know anything about knives, all right? So after, after just a little bit of, of you know, um, doing some work with it, they said, ah, I don't really like it. It's not sharp. Well, what this person really meant was the geometry wasn't doing what he wanted it to do. All right. He wanted something thin like this, this buck 119. Even though that at that given time, this 
Mora may have been sharper than the Buck 119, but the Buck 119's geometry allowed it to perform better. And I've, I've uh, talked before uh, in length about how the uh, geometry, uh, you know, is, is the main thing here. It, it uh, determines the functionality of the heat treatment of the steel. And so geometry is number one uh, for anyone using any type of cutting tool. Uh, you know, a, a chef's knife's geometry is, is different than, you know, a, a machete's geometry and so on and so forth. And, um, but as outdoorsmen, you have to look at these things and you, you have to ask yourself, <clears throat> if I don't have anything to sharpen a knife with, uh, except using a river rock, or, you know, something out of a creek bed, or um, how easy is a wide edge going to be able to be maintained? Because you're going to have to actually maintain it more because its perceivable sharpness uh, will be lacking. It may be just as sharp, but you're going to, it's not going to start slicing well. Okay, you go to cut roasts or you go to do some different things, it's not going to start. Uh, slicing well. So these knives with these types of thick geometries, uh, you're going to have to keep up on that edge far more. You're going to need a razor's edge for that knife to function how you want it to function. Here's one of my beloved knives here. This is the Bark River and Vehement Knife collaboration. And you'll see this. This is a thick knife. Very thick. Uh, that, that cutting edge is, is quite thick. Um, <clears throat> this cutting edge has to be sharp, very sharp at all times in order to perform like this Buck 119. And in my opinion, it does not perform like the Buck 119. Uh, the Buck 119, um, really, folks, I, I mean, I, I got to tell you, in many regards, this Buck 119 outperforms this knife hands down. Um, even dull, this Buck 119 uh, will still slice, uh, will still shave wood, no problem. Uh, many times I, you know thumb the blade, and I think, wow, geez, I, I have to sharpen that. Never really noticed, though, because I, the geometry was working for me. So, like I said, this is what we're talking about with perceived and actual sharpness. They actually might be the same sharpness on the cutting edge, but what one person is perceiving, or any person, the, is perceiving that one knife is sh sharper than the other, when actually it's not, it's one knife is working better than the other. And that is geometry-based. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.